Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, may I have your attention, please? Are you ready to engage in a mind-blowing experience and hear talks about life, technology, entertainment, and business? The next episode of Hip to Talks starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Hi everyone, Zoltan here. We're back again this week. Today we have a special guest, uh, Alex Kornilov, CEO and co-founder at Betagy, who is a longtime friend of our company. Hi, Alex. How are you? Hi, Zoltan. It's such a good thing to be with you today. I'm very good. All right. Yeah, we are happy to have you here. Today, we are going to talk about the gaming industry. Uh, we're shifting a bit of focus from the blockchain, artificial intelligence, but we are also staying in the artificial intelligence space a bit. So, Alex, uh, could you tell us some things about your background and maybe a few words about Betagy? Sure. I mean, let's if you, like you know, if we do uh, to do a proper introduction to our listeners and viewers, you know, I always was since my student years, I was always in data analytics space, uh, and uh, I did a bunch of projects and companies in this direction. And let's say Betagy is one of the uh companies which is uh you know the last one i launched and which is successful and uh, you know and, and grows and uh but it's all related to data analytics data visualization and also of course i gaming so in general what we do uh and we've been doing it for 10 years as uh, actually we use data to create visual uh advertisement for i gaming business and this spreads not only to digital but also to retail as well as tv so, for example, we take uh, data points which are available on, from all, let's say, iGaming clients, which includes odds, statistics, analytics, uh, social feeds. We plug it in our system, and uh, you know, in a few seconds, you can generate multitude of visual assets which you can use for any advertisement activities, uh, digitally on TV, retail, social, any any channel you have a visual, you want to have a visual data driven graphics. That's where we come. And yeah. all right. So yeah, for those listeners and viewers out there, Alex has been uh, uh, keynoting at our conferences in 2019, and uh, ever since then, his company yeah. has has skyrocketed. And you had a fantastic start to 2023, and, and and of course with the announcement of your creative studio and uh, subsequent CRM integration tool. And uh, for those who are listening, uh, who may not be aware of these tools, could you give us an overview about what you guys offer for your clients? Because we know and we love them, but. <laughs> sure, uh, Zoltan, it's very, you know, let's take a step back and, and, and talk not about the tools itself, but why. And that's important to understand because uh, we're, we're always a company which faces customers uh, and we deal with one of the most critical parts of their business marketing activities and media buy budgets and you know yeah. how do they spend money and if we know uh how the state of business is now in the gaming uh, let's say the innovation like optimization on the side of operations it's pretty well established so the general competition which goes uh like brand versus brand will compete on the marketing side not on the let's say product side is important but it's just a level zero for you to start your user acquisition then you need to have basically optimized budgets and optimized uh, creative processes and everything what contributes to a funnel where you have you know you have your reach engage and convert metrics you need to optimize that and this will which will define the difference between one brand versus another brand and uh, since we were always facing the clients with this kind of offering, we have to know what they need. And therefore, everything what we build is based not on our uh, wish or what we see or what we think our clients need, but actually working with the client and listening. And uh, from years in working on that, some features like become a pain point. And uh, let's say if we take a look on the Betagy development, we did uh we had those features years before but in order to make them you know in, uh, the way the modern era requires and the way our users are using our tools it took us another six months you know to re retool them and prepare it for the 
uh, scalable usage. Yeah? And uh, this was kind of a, those are the projects which are boring because you already have the tool. So it's nothing uh, which you can add and you need to go into needs and greets of final details on product development. And this is painful because you need to cut multiple things and you need to add multiple things. And uh, you need to deliver a product which is uh, boring. Yeah, connection to CRM, nothing exciting. There is no, um, there is no AI into this, or there is no like you know in specific this connection. But what happens? This is completely not boring for our clients who actually see the CPA uh, drops, they see the yeah. conversion rate improves, they see a higher ROI, and uh, this is where you know when we launch the product and you deliver it to the clients in a better stage they use it you see results and we launched it actually in a better stage before christmas so we had the december where i saw the first numbers and results of our optimized tools for this the crm integration you know as well as a creative studio and let's say with creative studio it's more uh, it just enabled larger scalable processes to create content without let's say our supervision as a, as a technology provider and it opened up the floods for creativity inside the organization. Uh, uh, but the CRM tool integration is something which we see the uh, uh, hard KPIs. And therefore, when we see, like when, when I got the numbers before Christmas, I was like, okay, Christmas comes early this year because I see that our um, input into the product development actually pays off on the better side. And we had, of course, to fix the bugs, to go through the process of testing, back and forth with the client. And then when we do ship the final version, we can announce it to the world and say, okay, where are once uh, smart banners, you know, we, which are connected to CRM and can optimize the content based on that, come talk to us. Because this is uh, something which we've been working for years on and the latest iteration gives it an, a real edge. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you recently, as I mentioned earlier, and you also mentioned the CRM integration tool. You recently announced the launch of the CRM integration tool. Yeah. And, yeah. and could you talk us to the process of the display and sure. campaign launch uh, throughout the uh, platform and what difference CRM integration tool makes? Yeah, it's it's very interesting because um, what you can do with CRM basically CRM is your knowledge about your customers. Yeah? So uh, you are able to take the audiences from this uh, tool and personalize the content based on few uh, parameters or multiple parameters and create lookalike audiences. And then, uh, for example, it allows you to actually personalize the banner all the way to the person. So if we know that this is a, a user ID 1221 coming in, we know what are his favorite uh, sport or game or what he bet previously on we can retrieve those data points and our engine will spit out the unique copy of the content so it will show you for example if you bet on arsenal uh and uh, it will right away give you the promotion for arsenal or it'll give you odds for next game of arsenal at the same time it will do this for each single player out there so it, it really does personalize the content but let's say connection to crm itself is not a uh complicated uh, process to pull off. What is complicated is to have a backend environment which allows you to generate yeah. billions of impressions with different content to different people. And let's say if you have a generic campaign which you run, for example, even if you schedule it, let's say you have a campaign which allows you to run uh, Premier League games during the week. Yeah? So you have a banner which shows you uh, Friday games and it switches to Saturday games and Sunday and then Monday it switches back to, to the next next week. Now this is a scheduler which you can set up in our system and this is good campaign. But it still shows the same banner to a variety of people. Yeah? But in order to show the same banner and, and personalize the content, you need to serve this ad so many times, like multiply it by number of people who will see it. And then you need to have a server environment which in actually real time pulls the data uh, update the audience, send it out, and it should do it quick. And because we are uh, speed freaks, you know, we cannot allow uh, allow our banners or solution to load long. Like it, it, it cannot take long time to load the banner because what we learned is that actually loading of the banner affects dramatically the level of conversions and and everything. Even though it might sound obvious, but it required us a lot of testing to see the numbers for itself. And, and that's why this was the main challenge, how to make a scalable server environment, which can 
why connecting CRM, it can actually utilize the power of CRM. And it can be used in many ways. You know, it's not only banner itself. You can send now personalized email campaigns. How cool it is when uh, you have a client, uh, let's say you support uh, Barcelona and yeah. your promotion, your email newsletter, which comes out, is not about uh, anything else, but it says, here's your uh, schedule for Barcelona game. No promotion, just schedule, which helps you. Okay, and then here's your uh, you know update after the game. And then so here's your free bet in Barcelona. It sounds so much more appealing to you than actually uh, just here is you have our week stop events. You know why exactly. do you care about uh, La Liga? Huh? So uh, in this case, this was a challenge, and you can use it for newsletters. You can use it for push notifications. You can use it for smart banners, for example, for uh, campaigns to distribute to affiliate networks. So it's like plenty of usage of the CRM slash smart barring tools. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I know how hard it is to pull uh, to create such things because in 2000, between 2009 and 2013, we had a website called European Soccer Statistics, an yeah. affiliate website. Uh -huh. and I remember when uh, I coded in PHP uh -huh. uh, <laughs> the statistics per each match, and we had to create the frame for it. So it generates yeah. the frame for that. It was very hard because we had just five leagues, and it was very crazy to create. And nowadays, yeah. it's has to be fast and it has to also be responsive exactly. because I think uh, it has to adapt to the to the uh, user's uh, interface yes. to his exactly. mobile. Yeah, yeah. And That's especially crazy. when you uh, you know, in our case, we deal with uh, with the budgets of our clients in a way that uh, if the creative is not loading, they are losing the traffic, exactly. and which uh, knocks up the level of um, fallback scenarios and. Uh, uh, tests we have to perform. Usually yeah. it takes longer to test things and debug than actually build, which is crazy. Yeah, like as, as an entrepreneur, you want things to happen like this. Oh, we have a feature, let's yeah. ship it out. Oh, we have a feature, let's ship it out. You know, we had no, a feature no, to, already exactly. for years, you know, and we never actually promoted it. Yeah, but now when we have a new level of clients which actually sp spend all the budget through BetterG platform, yeah, and, and we generate creative for them, Imagine our server goes down. What it, what will happen? Huh? And uh, like for 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 hours, they lose the traffic. You know, they, they it's a yeah. dramatic thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars which will be lost yeah, for promotional campaigns which they spend. Therefore, testing yeah. takes like sixty percent or even seventy percent of things. So we know that it actually <clears throat> works. Therefore, yes, you're right. It's <clears throat> and again, just you know, based on your comment, stepping back here, uh, backend is so big <laughs> you know it might sound often as a quick thing okay yeah. i want to have banners with odds how hard can it be <laughs> yeah exactly you know, how like, hard can it be yeah and and, and 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 then when you start digging into this and uh of course sometimes they have you know companies who say oh we have an internal development like this why do i need your tool or oh we can build it ourselves i always say good luck talk to you in six months when you've like exactly. when, when when you understand how much work it is, and 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 uh, it requires not only the front facing part, but also the to maintain all the sports, all the schedules, synchronize them correctly, update the odds, make sure that the odds feed is not down. Because I mean, I saw many things in my life and internal developments as well of our clients, and they've been asking Alex, but how did you actually make sure that the odds feed is not going down? Um, every time the banner is shown, it's like, wait, do you actually pull the odds directly from a banner to a banner? You need to create an instances which pulls the odds. Exactly. Right but so, so the uh, because we work in this space of data analytics and data visualization in ads for a long time, we have it like as a system built throughout the years, starting with five leagues, then tens, and new sports, and depth of data, and updates, and automatic adding of leagues. It's like, it's crazy. It's, it's a lot of work. And they need to have a team at least of our size to pull this off only for themselves, which is expensive, makes no sense, you know? Exactly. So let's also talk about the American market, because yeah. I know that you guys are very active over there. And, and, and in the past five years, uh, batting regulation, it has, I think, now live in 37 states. Uh, no. And then the immense resources have been thrown into player acquisition. We know that's crazy over there. Mm -hmm. So what role will programmatic advertising play in marketing strategies? Let's say if we take a look on the US, 90% uh, of the spend is ad buy uh, yeah. on TV. Yeah. So what, like, if you take a look on the marketing spending, yeah, 90 or like 
I can don't quote me on this, but it's significantly bigger. Like not it's like eighty to twenty. That's maybe the, the proportion of the budgets. Yeah, and which means uh, let's say the higher acquisition cost is driven by those display advertisement campaign on the TVs or uh, celebrity endorsements and everything. And obviously, when the state is opened, you know, let, let's take a look on the, the way this like New York. Yeah, when the New yeah. York opened, uh, what happened? You know, everyone flooded with the money to compete for players, and it spent for six months. And then it went down and it went down and until you find a profitable model for yourself to churn, uh, not churn, but to acquire players yeah. with proper CPA, which fits your business model. Therefore, you'll have everyone rush in and then cool down. And then it happens with every state yeah? in the states which which are able to find this kind of a funnel metrics, because it's the easiest thing is to pump money in. Yeah? Okay, let's open the money furnace, a marketing furnace and put the money in like one, two, three, four. And, and of course you have clients, but are you building the right metrics on the, on the back of it? Are you able to retain the clients? Are you able to engage the clients? And the companies who win the game is actually the ones who are working on KPIs, working on the efficiency of marketing funnel together with spending money. Otherwise, they cannot maintain this kind of spend and this yeah, exactly. kind of cost per acquisition long term. And uh, I would say how the display advertisement works. I think it's um, there are a few things to it. First of all, um, if I compare Europe to, to 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 US, there are a lot of spend which goes on paid social, yeah, which can be considered a display ad. Let, let's say you know the marketing terms here are very you know you can slice yeah. and dice the terms differently, but let's say where the money goes on the operator side, uh, paid social is a big thing, you know. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, there are companies which buy uh, Google, you know, because it's regulated market. You can go ahead and bid for traffic. Uh, which is, uh, I would say, the biggest uh, inventory DSP with or programmatic slash programmatic campaigns, which, which are out there, and uh, other tools. You know, you, you can basically find DSPs for each specific site, looking on the acquisition cost, depending on what inventory each DSP has, and and and, and, and therefore, I would say, this is the only measurable tool you have. There are, I would say there's three mechanisms. Yeah? Number one is TV spend, which is hard to measure yeah. unless it's transactional TV, which we're still far away from. You know, like uh, uh, so. Then you have the um, uh, display ads. You know, media buy. Let's call it a media buy. Yeah? Then you buy media uh, in, in in digital, and this is a, And then you have affiliates as well. Yeah, and affiliates. So you can measure those two affiliates. You can agree on CPA or C conversion, so you can measure it as well as you can do the same with media buy. And you need to you need to know your cost of acquisition, your conversion rate, click through rate, engagement rate, how the landing pages work. You know, so it requires a lot of work, and uh, it's not an easy work as well. It's not an easy job as well. You know, so to figure out what works on the funnel level for each state, and it will de de depend state 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 per state because uh, from European perspective, it might look simple that okay, US is like one country, one market, and just serve the same. No, it's actually different. Um, states require different approach to acquisition first licensing is different so you basically have a separate part of the marketing team work in each specific state so it will change the copy it will change the different uh, perception to the cost per acquisition it will change to the messaging uh, it's kind of a you know big thing you know state per state uh, things and some clients have like multi-state multi licenses so they need to scale up their marketing teams in this case and then if they do it right they will then increase the spend on TV, knowing that when they get into the digital space, the attention will be captured and maintained. Yeah? But I don't think, uh, Zoltan, this is a work which you can start and finish and say, yeah. thank, it's done. It's like ongoing, like programmatic advertisement and media buy is an ongoing work, which you do every day and you look for the edge, you know, are you profitable on this or not? Or And then you innovate and you try and so on test and then uh, optimize exactly yeah exactly so yeah yeah go ahead no it's just uh you know it's never a story because uh, sometimes i mean when you plan the um uh, marketing activities you know the mind wants to go into lazy uh, <laughs> thinking which is let's do optimization and then continue and then increase the budget <laughs> never <Yeah>. saw that <laughs> you know someone did optimization and then increase the budget it's actually everyday work of marketing managers and media buy managers to you know which is obvious but not everyone is actually in the same space usually exactly
So, so looking at the sports betting market, uh, we're going to stay in it. And, and I, yeah. I want to ask, how can operators ensure that their marketing stands out in such a competitive space such as sports betting? And is there is the adoption of new technologies key to this? And if it is, why? Uh, sports betting is very interesting. Yeah? The product itself has such a depth uh, which is unheard of of any digital advertisement. So if yeah. you sell Nike shoes, or like multiple shoes, you have uh, 500 pairs of shoes and they don't change throughout the season. And then you just, uh, so if you want to create a promotion for shoes, it's the depth of the product is a shoe. <laughs> like, you know, yes or exactly. no. When you take a look on a, on the sports, when you work with uh, different types of um, uh, data, you, you have the depths of like, you have different sports, you have different markets for odds, one X2, both them to score, and yes, it'll be money line, uh, over, under, and uh, spread, yeah? So, and then you have calendars, and then you yeah. have different parts of the product you want to promote, and different landing pages. So the depths of the offering is so big that it's hard to scale. Therefore, what we see is that uh, if you have a banner, which is event-based, so in banner with generic promotions, so let's say, we have a banner which says, Nick's are playing tonight. Yeah. And you show the odds for, for, for today and or uh, sign up with points bet yeah, or sign up with bet MGM. Uh, the conversion on one and second are night and day. Yeah, So you have at least 30% increase. At least this is the minimum numbers we saw. And because we do tests, we know. Yeah, So this works. And if you want to scale this up, and uh, for example, you are multi-state or multi-country uh, operator, you need to create separate schedule of the events which people follow. Uh, and I'm not talking about personalization yet, just segmentation. So, for example, you have uh, I don't know, Poland, which, uh, you know, La Liga, and then you have volleyball, which is a big, 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 big in Poland, and then you have UK, and then you want to add horse race into promotion, which is not popular in Poland, in, you know. So, and then you have Sweden, which is, uh, I don't know, Swedish league plays in summer. You know, so it, it becomes crazy. And in, in the amount of work which creative creatives and sheer volume of this, not talking about personal relation, just like, you know, the audiences, yeah. it's it's unbelievable. Therefore, uh, for them, what we help with, yeah, it's actually to scale this up. So you can pre-program all the schedules, you can preset everything, and then it will start churning, depending on the audience, different content for different states in the, or different countries. And uh, it works, mag it's like magical, you know, when you see the difference in, in the conversion numbers. And then uh, uh, next stage is personalization. Huh? And personalization is, uh, as they described, why the CRM slash smart banner tools was hard for us is to make sure that the servers can actually handle personalized uh, server exactly. environment can actually serve each single person a different copy of the, uh, uh, of the creative. Can you do it with your designers? No chance. <laughs> like, like audiences, probably if you hire 40 people, they'll yeah. sit and that night will <laughs> do you like personalized, uh, like no, no customized advertisement approach and do your landing pages and uh, 60 formats of each single event. And then you need to send it to it. It's a nightmare. That's why you don't do it. That's why you just say Premier League, you know, or you do the lower customization. Yeah. And, 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 and therefore it becomes very, you know, uh, important to use technology for scalability and you, you you grow you grow and then you hit the ceiling of what your team can produce and what makes sense and your expenses are high and then you introduce the technology which allows you to lower the expense make sure that your people who work do a meaningful job not just what machine can substitute them exactly with. Yeah. yeah and and they can create campaigns and they can push the template and they can set it up and they can think what is needed yeah and technology will do the manual, boring thing, like putting the different odds and, and then couple compiling those things. And you just need to supervise and create the campaigns and innovate in a, okay, what else do we can offer? What is interesting? What are the most interesting games and so on? And personalization is like level up from, from, from it. So technology is key for a scalable uh, operations of marketing for any operator. All right. Are you guys not don't just do sports betting right so you are not limited to sports market and you also do uh i gaming i casino as well right yeah yeah we, we work with casinos and it's uh in, interesting stories all the time covid started and uh you know coming back who would think that there were no sports events in the world 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and Just think us, about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and uh, do you put this in the business plan as a threat? Back 2020, 2019 for 2020. No, you put the growth projections. You say life will be beautiful and amazing, you know. And then yeah, exactly. uh, that's what we will sell. That's the product line which we have. And then uh, March comes, you know, February, March. First, you're in denial. All will be good. All will be good. And then you're in a, a state of panic. Yeah. And your clients write to you one by one. You know what? <laughs> Sorry, you have like we don't do any sports events now. So why do we need this service? So I had to go and put everyone to work. And in one month, we introduced. You know, we did the MVP of Casino Product, and then it grew out ever since. And we substituted for our services for our clients for Casino Product while they've been growing the casino. And Casino has a unique challenges and a different approach to scalable advertisement. Yeah, and uh. It's interesting to explore this, and uh, we keep working on optimization of that. Majority of our clients now will run with us both campaigns and casino and sportsbook because it's usually same teams of different teams, but with a, in, inside same organization. Therefore, for casino, what is important is actually the visual story which you tell with your images, which which tells yeah. with your, um, you know, kind of how you can. In instantly trigger the desire to click. So it's more like a game content that you use instead of, so games becomes a sports content in sports banner. Like, you know, you substitute sports content for games itself and for the visual appeal, which requires integration with game providers as well and all the database of all the visuals so you can generate uh, banners based on what games they would like to promote, which is pretty much the same trade as in a sports, but now it's like different type of game. And then what is important for Kazini is also a landing page part where you uh, actually uh, take person from, uh, you know, banner all the way to landing page, registration or not, additional information, and then you, you convert the client. And for us, uh, for example, this CRM connection tool is 70% important for specifically for casinos because you want to optimize the content based on what people did before, which game was the yeah. most yeah. So if you play, you know, a certain title, uh, the best conversion you'll get is actually promoting this title with certain bonus. Yeah? Therefore, the CRM connection was uh, critical for Casino. And we work on this. It's very interesting uh, space. It's more uh, restricted in many ways, you know, like what you can do. Uh, but for example, you, there are so many things which we are excited to announce soon in this direction. Because uh, you know, Lothan, what we ultimately build, you know, you know, uh, just you know, stepping back again. Sometimes people talk about vision of the company, and of course, you have a vision as an entrepreneur, and then, and but when the company grows, uh, it becomes you start to be more okay. What is actually you need to restate the vision every single uh, five months or six months because things change, you know, yeah. and and you see those changes, you know, uh, all the time. And being stupid and saying this is our vision, you know, it's it's kind it's of no uh, such thing. <laughs> yeah, no such thing because you need to follow multiple factors. Yeah, uh, like financing, you know, what do your customers expect, profitability of the business, and so on. So we learn. Let's say every week, I don't have a meeting with my team where we didn't learn something. It's like, oh. This is the way it is. And we do it for 10 years all the time. You know, like every week we build products for customers and we learn back. So what I can tell you is that um, what we build is actually now is by adding so many things, we're building the marketing hub for, for the industry. And we are not serving any other industries. So I'm not going into shoes or finance or something. We are powering, we're like, Powering a hub with the data, and we will have already so many integrations coming up uh, soon. So, for example, now you can use banners which you generate with sports, add the schedule, or and push it to programmatic or DSP affiliate. Then you have uh, CRM tools which allows you to create lookalike audiences and serve the smart banner to the um, network of affiliated websites. This is another use case. And then you can combine those two and generate push notifications. And then you can do the same, but do it for retail screens and have your video playing. So uh, we have a lot coming up in casino integrations. So we will add a lot of things on backend, which will allow the advertisement to thrive. 
and uh, in this space. And, and we make sure that uh, our operators behind it, uh, because now everything, operators doesn't have tools actually to, to yeah. do a lot. And we're enabling those tools. And because of our industry focus, we actually talk to everyone and we learn, what is the problem here? Say, so, oh, we cannot do this. Like, okay. And we talk to another one. Do you have the same problem? No, we actually, okay, so maybe it's another problem. And our vision of a company, you know, now moves into that we have created a hub for all things marketing in this like HubSpot you have for social media. You know, we're building this with multiple integrations. And there are a couple of announcements coming on TV space, uh, you know, which we're uh, working on. Where finally the our industry will have a easy way to distribute advertisement with the TV stations. And you know, we've been working in the last two years with uh, World Series of Poker, with NBC, with ESPN previously, uh, to actually learn how the TV environments work, so we can integrate our hub to uh, you know to the TV environments. So, for example, let's take Operator One. We'll be able to generate same way they do the programmatic buy-in on 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 a, on a, uh, on a in Google. They will be able to do it with the TV networks they sponsor. They don't sponsor or you know over free inventory. But again, it it sits on top of this hub which we are creating, and that's why I had to do dramatic uh, number of people like hiring. You know, so so I have engineers to build this hub, and this hub should be scalable in all ways. So it's not yeah. only one thing, it's like, you know, multiple workflows, which it's, it should support. And this is a vision now, you know, and, and it's why, you know, for us, casino becomes a very important part. And there are so many things we want. We will, we will not want to, but we will do. It just takes time, you know, so. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time. And I congratulate you for all, everything you did in the past few years when we haven't touched actually base because of yeah. we were so caught up in projects. So it, it was nice yeah. to catch up. And, and awesome. I remember that we had such similar discussions in person uh, about four years ago. So it, it's really nice to hear all these things. So as a closing remarks, if you want to add something, uh, you know, I just want to thank you, you know, for 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 this time. And I'm happy to see you. And you know, if anyone wants to know more about this, we're always open for conversation. We're always open for new projects. We're always open for uh, meeting, shaking hands, and listen. Yeah. And if someone has a problem in the industry which we are not solving, we will be happy to know what this problem is and how to solve it and uh, what it will be. You know. Uh, so. Um, Let's, uh, in general, uh, you know, see how the industry will change with the introduction of AI tools and everything. And, and uh, we can redo the podcast in six months and, and, and see what was the difference, you know, now and then. And I'll be able to provide you an update on the marketing side. How does it look like now? All right. Thank you so much, Alex. And thank you, thank everyone, you for joining us. Uh, for our listeners and viewers, make sure to hit that subscribe button right there. And uh, we'll be back next week with another guest. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Be sure to check back next week for the next Hip to Talks and subscribe on Amazon Music, Overcast, Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, MixCloud, and Pandora.